Hi everyone, my name is Peter, and it's time to review the fountain pen that's in this box. It's been a little while since I did such a thing, so uh, let's get to it. Uh, okay. A fountain pen from Novelure, like some of my own Peter pens. Go check those out if you haven't. Now, the thing you gotta remember about fountain pens is that they're really cool. I don't know, I don't know what I was gonna say actually, but they are really cool. Check that out. Let me slide it out of the protective plas plastic sleeve. So this is called the Rainbow Rass. It's supposed to be inspired by a similarly named fish that sparkles in pretty colors in the sunlight. So we got this beautiful, glistening, sparkling, vacuum-filled demonstrator body with rainbow trim on all parts. Look, I've got sun coming through a slit in my blinds. Oh yeah. Who I should... I don't usually film... Oh, it went away. I was about to try to get like a cool shot of the sunlight coming through the slit in my blinds right there. And it would be like, bling, off the pen because there's so many shiny things going on here, but it's okay. All right, let's put some ink in this. You know, it'd probably be nice to put some shiny ink in here, but I really want to draw with it. And I really, 95% of the time, only enjoy drawing with black ink. So I'm gonna put black ink in it, and I think it'll still be very nice and colorful. And it'll be a test of its true glistening, shiny powers, if it's still pretty with dreary old black ink in it. Got like this um, airtight plunger thing in there. Yeah, come on. Oh yeah, it's pulling some ink up in there now. Or maybe I'm doing it wrong. I feel like I say that a lot in my fountain pen videos. Surely all these ink Olympics won't end poorly. All you do is unscrew the back piston knob, pull it all the way back, submerge the head into ink, and start pushing down. <laughs> Guys, I was doing it backwards. You're supposed to, you're supposed to, <laughs> this is the first time I've used one of these, okay? It's my first time. I watched a YouTube short. You're supposed to pull it out all the way. There's a, section here at the bottom where it gets a little wider and it doesn't, this plunger doesn't create a seal. So you pull it out, then you plunge it in the ink and push it down. It's creating pressure. And then when it gets passed into this little section, the pressure releases and the ink rushes up around the plunger in this little section here. I think that's what's supposed to happen. Okay. Let's see if it happens here. I'm plunging into my extremely full ink bottle. It's creating pressure. <gasps> Look at it go. It is filling up. Well, it filled up a bunch anyways. It's as much as I need. It is still really pretty with black ink in there. Look at that. The black ink does not stop the sparkle. Wow, actually it seems almost more sparkly because of the contrast. I like that a lot. Anyways, now that I struggled with the vacuum filler because I 
Didn't read the instructions. This is a uh, medium nib I have here. Let's try doing some drawing. Mm. So the pen is sparkly and it has as many colors as you could ever want with its rainbow accents. But the question remains, does it perform? I think the answer is yes. I, like I said, I have the medium nib here and even with the, well, like you saw, I didn't really fill up the reservoir all the way when I performed, when I finally figured out how to perform the vacuum fill action, kind of just, it squirted a bunch of ink up in there. And I did this whole drawing that took several hours without having to refill the pen at all. And that's what I've found in the past, like fountain pen ink, it goes farther than you think it will, unless you're like really laying down big thick uh, sections of ink, or if you're using paper that is very absorbent. Like if you're drawing on a paper towel, uh, it's gonna use a bunch of ink. But this was pretty good. I'm drawing on Bristol paper here, which is pretty stiff, crisp paper, and uh, it worked good. It felt good. It, you know, some of the things I don't like about fountain pens ends up being things like having to feel like I'm pressing too hard just to make it work or if it feels too big and heavy in my hand, like if I'm just experiencing a bunch of fatigue, right? When I'm drawing, I just want it to be about the drawing and not me having to struggle with the actual pen itself, which is, I think these are things I mentioned before, and none of that was the issue with this pen. So if you wanna grab yourself one, if you like how it looks, if it, uh, you know, if the sparkly glint catches your eye, there's a link in the description, it is an affiliate link so I can make a couple bucks by recommending it to you. Um, and of course you can put pretty much any fountain pen ink in it that you want. There's about 100 billion options there. Just maybe not India ink. In other news, I'm, I don't, I think it, this happened after the video so you can't see it in this video maybe, but I am a little bit sunburnt which is weird because I went out to um, the lake with some friends a day or two ago and I didn't expect to get sunburned because it was kind of dreary overcast weather. And so a few times we went out on a boat, we were just kind of riding around, you know, a pontoon boat. I don't know who came up with that word pontoon, funny word, funny boat. I think it's appropriate actually that pontoon boats are named that because it's pretty much a, um, if you don't know what a pontoon boat is, it's pretty much a platform, a flat rectangular platform. And then it has two kind of metal tubes underneath that it's resting on. Like if you think of a seaplane, right? How a seaplane lands on those two uh, hollow tubes, kind of. It's kind of a, a pontoon boat is kind of the, the seaplane version of a boat, except that pontoon boats, you just take away the airplane part and you just put a square platform with a bunch of comfy, cushiony seating. It's basically the most relaxing way to move around on a, on a body of water, assuming there's no big waves or anything. I mean, but they can take waves pretty good. It's just pretty much the lounge it's just a floating, movable water lounge. And yeah, anyways, what I'm trying to say is I was very shocked that I got sunburnt because the sun came out for like two minutes the whole day. It was like raining, foggy, overcast. And and so I, I, I brought sunscreen. I brought some spray-on sunscreen for my body. I brought some special lotion for my face because, you know, one time I had this bad experience where I tried the regular body spray-on stuff and put it on my face and I got like 1,000 pimples because I put the body sunscreen on my face. Um, and so I totally ignored all of it because I thought the sun wasn't out. And apparently a lot of it, a lot of the um, harmful ultraviolet rays or whatever it is that gives you sunburn filtered on through the clouds and baked my my skin 
and so I had my thighs and my face and my arms a little bit crispy. Thankfully, it's not too bad. It wasn't to the point where, you know, I was like tossing and turning at night. Every little motion was waking me up or, you know, sometimes if I have a bad sunburn, like the hot water of a shower is too much. You can only take like lukewarm showers because your skin is just too sensitive. One time I was at the beach and my sunburn was so bad that I got like some weird version of sun sun poisoning. Is that a real thing? But I remember I was like, everyone else was having fun out on the beach on like the second or third day. And I was like in the bed uh, back at like the condo or whatever. And I was like lathered in this aloe vera lotion. And someone had gone to the drugstore and gotten some for me with like, like lidocaine in it or something like as I, I was trying and I was like taking like Tylenol or something I was just in so much pain my whole body like hurt like my skin was just like ne- there was like needles going into my skin everywhere because my sunburn was so bad look I'm just my skin is uh real pale and burns easily and so now I know I'm not even safe on cloudy days but I still had a good time. And, you know, that's why usually when I go to the beach, I don't sit outside on a beach chair with just my trunks on, uh, you know, and try to get a sun suntan. I, I usually wear like a, like a, like a long sleeve linen shirt, something that still looks a little bit vacationy. Right. And I usually, you know, like maybe some pants, like, but not like trousers, but like some breezy pants, something kind of long and windy or if I am wearing my trunks I'll at least drape my towel over my legs and my feet I mean getting the tops of your feet burnt that's tough because next time you try to put on shoes or even flip-flops oof anyways I don't know why I'm talking about sun sunburn for so long uh but I also went fishing for the first time in forever I think the last time I went fishing I was like nine years old my friend had his fishing rod there and it was the kind of fishing i thought all fishing you had to put like some weird greasy like gooey like dead bugs or bait or something on the fishing hook but this was some kind of fishing hook that had like a it had like a a fuzzy thing on it right i think a fuzzy thing is a big part of any bait is that the right word or anyways and then a little metal Um, oval tab called a spinner so as you pulled it through the water reeling it in uh i would it it would spin and sparkle kind of like this this pen it would like the the sun would come down and it would kind of imitate i think was supposed to imitate like a fish's scales glinting and glistening and sparkling in the water and it would also make the whole thing kind of you know and, and and I think also the like the how the the fishing rod, uh, you know, wiggles and moves a little bit would also help. The, just like the irregular motion of it going through the water as I reeled it in would all kind of help it imitate the motion of a fish. So maybe then a bigger fish would bite it. Anyways, I didn't catch anything, but I had a good time doing it. Just like reeling it in, casting it back out reeling it in casting it back out i mean i don't want to promote gambling but it felt a little bit like gambling in the sense that i oh it didn't cost any money and really all i was gambling with was however much time it took to do another cast because every time i reeled it in sometimes you think like well maybe that's it maybe i'm just not going to catch anything maybe maybe the fish ain't biting but then you thought Hey, but maybe on the next cast, maybe on the next cast I'll catch something. And the next one after that. So I can see how people have a, have problems with gambling. Because it's always, you know, that next one could be it. Don't gamble, people. But maybe do go fishing, especially these ones where you don't have to use gross bait. And especially if you never catch anything, then you never end up hurting any fish. And you just end up kind of standing out on a dock chilling for a while it was it was not bad at all you know not bad at all and I was out there early in the morning when the water was still 
and there was like hardly any ripples. I knew there were fish out there because every now and then they would jump up out of the water and there were these little birds flying around and then sometimes there were bigger, bigger birds flying around. Herons, I think. Uh, the first time I saw the heron, I thought it was a lawn ornament because it was just standing there so still and I was walking up and then it it scared the, scared the crap out of me as it its huge wings spread out and it flew away. It wasn't a lawn ornament. And, uh, yeah. Also, highlight of this lake trip uh, was that I got to see, you know how they like putting um, power plants next to, next to lakes for some reason? I don't know if this is really a thing. I think it is. I think it's because, I'd like to think it's not because they like dumping chemical waste into the water i'd like to think it's because they like running the water through some element of the power plant to like cool it down or something right oh it's because it was a steam plant they need the water look but the it look the power plant looked awesome you know i love drawing weird industrial stuff uh and this thing was a hub of weird industrial stuff and we could kind of we kind of sailed right up to it several times and there were these huge smoke stacks i think there were well steam stacks the steam just billowing out all day and all these weird just i don't, I don't know what they were because i'm not a power plant expert but um of course i don't i don't like what it was because this is one of the one of the few actual like coal power plants left. You can look it up. It's called the um I think it's called the Roxboro Roxboro steam plant. And of course they like calling it a steam plant, but it's coal powered and we went by one section of it and you could see all these huge piles of coal. And I guess they burn the coal to heat up water to generate steam, to turn turbines to generate generate the electrical power or something like that? Is that is that how it works? <laughs> I was literally sitting here scratching my head just now. Like, like that's a head scratch? Why do people scratch their head when they're thinking? Why is that a thing? It's somehow, I just like subconsciously was scratching the side of my head while I was trying to figure out something that I didn't understand. Must be some subconscious weird thing that happens to enough people that it made it into, it turned into a stereotype or a meme of some kind. But anyways, I'm going to go now and um, drink some water because if you can't tell, my throat is a little bit unwatered. I don't know why it's suddenly like that, but I mean, I have water right here. I could just... Is that better? <clears throat> Is that better? Anyways, I'm going to put another little piano song at the end of this video. And it's rough. Like if you ever, I mean, I'm used to hearing my own voice recorded now. But a lot of people, I think when they hear their own voice recorded, they're like, Ugh, is that what I sound like? Well, the same kind of thing is happening with piano, right? It's like when I'm sitting there playing the piano in the middle of it, in the midst of it, experiencing the playing as I'm doing it, hearing it as I'm pressing the keys. Uh, it's a totally different experience than watching it back, than listening to it back. It feels, uh, well, one of the things I've, I'm learning listening to it back is that I need to like, I don't know if ham it up is the right word, but um, a lot of the uh, dynamics and drama of the piece is just in my head is just in like the feeling of me pushing the keys and when it's just when i'm just listening to it 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 feels a lot flatter but look i'm gonna go ahead and record it because i still want to um document document where i'm at right because a lot of the times when i'm learning these pieces i look i look at i look them up on youtube because they're they're beginner pieces so a lot of like um, I don't know how to describe them. There's, there's a few, there's a bunch of YouTube channels that are, where they just play piano pieces that are like in all these beginner books. Uh, and then people like me who try want to know how, what they sound like, or want to see how they're played, go and use them, use these videos as references. Right. And then a lot of these people, I've seen comments under these videos of people saying, Oh, wow. I remember when I first played this 
four years ago or whatever. I wonder, I wish I had, rec- uh, basically people wishing that they had recorded themselves. So that, and then, and then they're talking about all these crazy pl- pieces that they're playing now. And basically I want to be able to see the contrast, the difference, the progress, right? And I won't be able to see that unless I record where I'm at now. So I do have the urge to not show it, to not record it until I get to some level of virtuosity, right? Until I am, you know, a great piano player and and do feel like I can show off to the world. But that moment may never come because I'll always have a higher, uh, you know, high goals for myself. And the more I learn, the higher those goals will get because I'll learn about you know, the more I can do. The same thing happens with drawing. So don't hold, you know, don't stop yourself from sharing your artwork, whether it's drawing or or music or or whatever it is that you like doing. Don't stop yourself from sharing it or anything just because you know you can get better. It's okay. You will get better. Just keep plugging away, share it, or document it somehow. I don't know what I'm saying, but anyways... Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching, listening, hanging out, and uh, wear sunscreen even on cloudy, cloudy days, all right? All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. I've been working on this song called Uptown News. The tempo is a little jazzy. It's a little swingy, right? So as a, as a new piano player, that's been the challenge with this piece, but it's been fun. It's been fun.